is Megan Glidden, and I'm the community engagement <coughs> librarian for Imaginative Libraries. And we're so glad to be part of this Green Seeds event and to be launching our Blackhead Girls Sea Library, which we're doing here, and then we'll begin our location on Tuesday. So we're really excited that all this is happening. And since we're such a small group, um, we'll keep it pretty. I'll do my little presentation, and then we can have a little conversation afterwards. And um, I probably won't use the mic, but if you want me to, let me know if you're having a hard time hearing me or anything like that. So, I'm going to go ahead and get started. So, many of you may know what a C library is. Just in case you don't, we'll go over the basic premise. The whole idea behind a seed library is that you borrow seeds. So you take seeds for free, and then you plant them. You can grow flowers, vegetables, herbs, whatever. So already, this is a pretty awesome idea. And then, to take it a step further, you can use one of the plants that you grow, harvest the seeds from that from that plant and then return them or donate them to the library. And that's what really makes it uh, sustainable, is that we have people bringing seed back and uh, adding to the diversity that's in the library. So it's a really exciting concept and it's something that is happening all over the country. Seed libraries are popping up. And so last I checked there were about 500 seed libraries that are in the United States and even more around the world. And I don't think it's a coincidence that we have those seed libraries popping up right now because you can get free local seeds to local people. And that's really critical right now. Um, you're also getting increased seed diversity and increased food security. And all of those things I think are really important for a healthy community. So we're going to talk a little bit more about the impacts and the desired outcomes from this project a little bit later. But already you can start to see that this is something that has the potential to really have a big impact on a community. So you can start to see why having a seed library in the community is important. You might be wondering why Imagine If Libraries is involved. And of course, there's the obvious connection that the C library is a library, and that's fair enough. You know, it's a similar concept of giving free things to people. But there are a couple other reasons why Imagine It Right All. Um, last year, a couple months before this event, the Good Seed Company, run by Robin Kelson, uh, approached the Imagine If libraries and asked us if we wanted to be involved. And we said yes, and as you may have heard, I said yes, but maybe after my maternity leave. <laughs> um, and so we said yes. And I was just gonna explain to you a little bit about why, why we said that, and why it's something that fits well with who we are as a library system. So, um, I don't know if you've been into any of our libraries. Imagine if it has libraries in Kalispell, Columbia Falls, Big Fork, and then we're some volunteers that run a little part in Marion, part of the school library there. Um, we are not your traditional 20th century library, and we are a public library. We are part of the Flathead County Library System. We rebranded in 2014 part to reflect that we are not that 20th century li library. We are into making and doing and teaching people through having experiences. And we want people to uh, learn 21st century skills when they come to our library. Things like collaboration and creativity. And, um, and that's really important for us. So we invite people of all ages to play and interact and do and try new things in and out of the library. And so here I think you can really see the delight on kids' faces and adults, and all by experimenting with our wind tunnel. This is what imaginative libraries are all about, that delight, creating that delight from that experience. 
And so just to drive that, that uh, home a little, like in that photo, our manifesto captures the essence of Imagine It. And I'm just going to read it to you here. Why we explore. We are on this planet to hold out the promise of adventure and self-discovery and encourage people to take it. We are driven by change. Sorry. Look, sorry. <laughs> we are driven by a desire for life-altering experiences and the opportunity to help people feel free and pioneering in the search and expression of their individuality. We believe in bending the rules. We trust our guts, follow our hearts, and do our best to push the bravest ideas forward. The library is not a warehouse for books and periodicals or films and music. This is a launching pad for dreams. We are wall to wall rich with ideas representing raw, unconstrained human possibility. This is a place of community, a haven for wide-eyed children, hungry entrepreneurs, backpack-laden travelers, online adventurers, and quiet corner escape artists. This is a place of life, where the quest for ideas, dreams, and self-fulfillment is supported every single day. It gives me goosebumps every time. Um, so we have this wonderful identity, and we have this idea of what we're all about. We also have a really good strategic plan that we've developed over the years, and this is our current plan has three goals. And goal number one is that the people of Flathead County will have opportunities to share ideas, expand connections, and build relationships. Goal number two is that everyone in Flathead County will have the tools, spaces, and inspiration to achieve personal transformation. And goal number three is that the Flathead will be a place of makers, doers, triers, innovators, and explorers. And so I think it's pretty easy to see how a seed library can help us meet those goals. Um, so now you might understand a little bit better why Imagine Africa said, yes, this is something we want to be involved with. This is a good fit for us. So once we got there, we developed a project brief. And the project brief is kind of like our guiding document as we move forward with this. And it set out what we were going to do, what our ideas were. Um, it clarified the roles for Imagine If Libraries and for Good Seed Company. And we figured out like that this had to be, because of our limited resources and things like this, it had to be a pilot program. And we decided that it would be best to do this in Columbia Falls, at our location there. Um, so we got that squared away, and it was time to find partners. So like I said, we had to manage our resources and know that we don't have that many uh, staff members or that much money that we can spend on this. So we have Robin Kelson from the Good Seed Company, who is awesome, and she's really been a champion on this project and really made it work. Uh, she has agreed to take on so much, and she's really helping with cleaning and packing of seeds and going to the library on a regular basis, just really um, spearheaded this effort. And so this, it's fantastic that we have Robin to work with on this project. But we knew we needed more community support. So we reached out and found others in the community that were willing to help get the Seed Library on its feet. Um, we talked to uh, the Columbia Falls Junior High Garden Club. And you can see uh, Sherry, on the she helps run that garden club. And then uh, Mary is with Food Corp. And we also reached out to the Columbia Falls Community Garden. So we got all these community members involved. And they're going to really help with the actual work of cleaning, donating seeds, making sure it gets back into the library in a timely manner, and putting those seeds out for people to take. So I think with all these groups involved, we're really hoping that the seed library will continue to grow and uh, be a sustainable effort so that people can come in and get seeds. And as I mentioned before, the library is always you know, tight on its budget and people and all those things. Um, 
So this will be a pilot program. And that means that we are trying it out and that we will be very flexible during the time that we are trying it out. It is something we hope to continue as long as we're able to. Um, but we had to develop some kind of criteria and things to make sure that it was worth our efforts. And so we're kind of doing that in an ongoing way, working on that with um, Robin and some other members that are involved. But as we were doing that, we started to see a lot of the outcomes that were possible with such a small project like this. And so you can see here, we have the things we provide over there on the left column. So we provided some startup money to buy some of the equipment and things like that. Uh, we're facilitating community partnerships, so getting people together. Um, we have a small space, like a four foot by eight foot space in the library. And we have provided supplies, the envelopes and whatnot. We will be promoting the workshops and coordinating volunteer time. So it starts pretty small. And just with those small things, the outputs we have are that people can attend workshops and learn about local gardening. Uh, they can make a strong connection with other community members. They can retain local knowledge and regionally specific seeds. And from there it starts to grow. And pretty soon people can grow the food themselves with seeds specific to the area. They can be self-sufficient and confident in their abilities to do things by themselves. They can know that there are other like-minded and passionate people in their community, which I don't think can be underestimated. <laughs> and knowing that there's a community out there is fantastic. And they can know how to preserve a sustainable seed supply. So that even snowballs further and pretty soon you're building stronger relationships you get a uh, local food security which can be a really major thing for people um, you can have increased understanding of healthy food and food systems and access to quality information social inclusion pride in local resources and then kind of those long-term major impacts you can have self-reliance, and people know that they are supportive of each other, and you have a healthier community, basically, both uh, physically with the food choices that they can make, and also just knowing that they have that support system, and having good stewards of these local resources. So all these things, these little tiny things, you start with kind of like growing from seed start with a little tiny seed and you end up with something totally amazing and useful and wonderful. And so I think all this work is so inspiring to see the potential outcome for this uh, that we really wanted to make our seed library accessible so that it would be approachable and people wouldn't be intimidated and they'd be happy to try. And so we wanted simple, straightforward, and clean. And this is what we came up with. So if you haven't seen it already, it's down at the bottom of the stairs. We have a fold-out table and a little cube there. Um, we have seed packets that people can take for free. Uh, no library card is needed. You don't have to log on to a computer. You don't have to even write anything in a binder. You just get to take seeds for free. Um, we ask that you <coughs> grow them, which is uh, a lot of times things are free and you take them because you get so excited <laughs> and then they just sit there. So we're hoping people take the seeds and then actually grow them. And then, you know, that is one of our biggest goals for the year is just to get people to take seeds and grow them. For us, if we get seeds returned, that will be a bonus and that we have enough seeds to keep the supply going. But the idea is that people will bring seeds back to supply, supply uh, seeds for others. And you know, in actuality, we might end up with a couple of really knowledgeable and uh, generous people who have a lot of seed and they donate enough that supports the rest of the community. 
that's fine. <laughs> as long as it keeps the cycle going, we're happy with how it works out. Um, and so as you can see, and I have here the seed envelope, um, and it's pretty simple. A lot of this, again, was a conscious decision to keep things simple. Um, we didn't want it to be intimidating for people, and we want to make sure that people are able to take the seeds. This is the donation form. So seed donations will be accepted at Imagine if Columbia Falls and cleaned and packed by volunteers. So you can bring uncleaned seed, fill out a donation form that looks like this, put as much information as you know, and leave it. And uh, Robin will come in and take it and work with volunteers to get it cleaned and packed into the seeds and we'll have it back out and available for people to take. Um, there are a lot of things here that we, again, we're trying to make this as, as accessible as possible so that people provide as much information as they can and don't feel like their seed is in any way inferior. We're hoping to do that kind of quality control in the seed cleaning phase. So if we find out that something really doesn't look looks moldy or isn't viable, we won't put that seed up. And I have a little video, if you don't mind playing the video up there. Um, so this is just from our seed cleaning workshop that we had last fall. And, you know, as we go forward at the seed library, we're really hoping to engage new gardeners and old gardeners alike we want young and old people to be involved. Um, those who've never tried gardening, everyone's welcome. Um, we want to support people growing and saving seeds in the valley. And you know, part of our idea is that we will have workshops that provide education on how to save seeds and how to garden from seeds. So right now we have a plan that Robin will provide quarterly workshops. Um, already talking with some other organizations, we're hoping to maybe expand that. Hopefully we will get to having one every month, things like that. Uh, we have a lot of resources available. We started a web page on our website that has a little bit more information and a few links so that people feel supported and they know what to do. Um, if you haven't been gardening from seeds, if you've just been buying starts, it could be a little intimidating. If you haven't ever grown things for seed, it is a little different than growing to harvest the vegetables or the flowers or whatever. Um, and so we're hoping to help people with that through workshops, through links to resources on the website, and um, also with books. No, that's another thing that we do at the library. The library will not be perfect. There will be things we can miss and things that we will keep working on. But it's a start. And we are really excited that we can be part of that start in the Flathead Valley. Um, making these community connections. And, you know, we've done some of it beforehand, but even today at an event like this, connecting with people in the community is really fantastic and learning that there's all that support out there is just a wonderful thing. And I think that this small space has the potential to make some really big change in the community. And so I'm excited to uh, be here to start things out. And now I do have a little call to action for you. <laughs> so to have this C Library be a success, we really need people to use the C Library to pick up seeds, plant things, grow them, bring seeds back. And I think if we get that, get people doing it, then we will be able to continue having the seed library around, maybe even move it to different locations as well. Um, and then the other thing I ask you to do is to tell people about it. Uh, maybe you can't make it up there or don't have seed to donate this year. Tell your neighbor, maybe they do or have someone, have a friend who has never started gardening and has always been into <coughs> let them know about the seed library. Perhaps if they're getting free seeds, it just seems a little less scary that they have the resources or a workshop to get started. Um, we want people to use the seed library and we want people to know about it. 
And I think um, that's about it. Uh, I think with community support and involvement, it will really be a wonderful thing to have in this valley. And I, uh, we worked hard on this project, and we really hope that it can continue and be a good, a good thing for the valley. So I think that's about all I have right now as far as presentation. So I would like to open it up and see if there are any questions, if people have questions. And you can turn up the lights. I think that's all, all I've got there. Um, does anyone have any questions about the seed library? Or Yes. Are you going to try to keep track of the history of the where the seeds came from? You know, how many years they grew them in the valley so we know kind of what the history is of them? Sure, that's a great question. So it was, the question was, are we going to keep track of the history of the seeds and if they've been grown in the valley or what, whatnot? So we debated a bit about how much information we wanted to require on the donation form. And we ended up putting a section for notes where people can write that kind of information. It's not something that we will track and it's not something that we will require. I think the more information people can provide on that form, the better, and the more likely people will be to take the seeds if they know that it has a good local provenance and has been successful here. Um, also, if they know that it was something from the previous year or the previous few years and they're likely to be successful in planting it, I think that will mean more people will take those seeds. So we have a little bit of ambiguity there. We don't have a place that says what year was this harvested, but we do have a line that says from. So we're trying to ask people to be conscious of where their seeds came from and include as much information as possible. But we are, like long term, I think we really would like to have that kind of information and encourage those local varieties and things like that. So to get started, did people bring in like you know leftover seeds that they had bought at Hoopers and stuff like that, or were you encouraging criteria of you know strictly seed that you had saved yourself? So uh, most of the seed that we're going to be using to start the library comes from this event. <laughs> so a lot of it is coming from this event, and Robin has also been having some workshops and and using getting gathering seed from those workshops. So um, I know there are a lot of seed libraries that do start out by asking well, seed companies around the country to donate old seeds, and that is another way to do it and to get started. We did not, we have not done that. So the seeds that you're starting with are mostly seeds that people um, grew here in the valley. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Is there any way to tell if the seeds are from a greenhouse or? You know, if they're grown in a greenhouse no, environment or question. just in the ground? No, we don't. I mean, I don't think... Is there a place can... on the form for that? Oh, uh, the question was... Sorry, I'll try to repeat that. Uh, the question was if there was a way to tell if they've been grown in a greenhouse or if they've been grown in the soil. And that is a good question. It's not something we currently have on the form. Um, That's again, important because, information. Yeah, it, really it is, is important information to have. Um, and I think that's something that... Hopefully we could, again, have in the notes area that people could say greenhouse grown or something like that. Uh, because it's a very, as you all know, a very different environment than a greenhouse here than out, out on the land. Yeah, the, uh, yeah. the heirloom seeds, uh, you know, they've been around for, say, since the 1800s, I mean, and it's not really into the heirloom ones, and, uh, and uh, they're open pollinated, so you, they you to come true the form. And, uh, and but they, they, they'll say, uh, like, I got I can say, well, I'm comparing the tomatoes. Uh -huh. And uh, some of them, they'll say they come from Czechoslovakia, Russia, whatever. You know. And that, I think that's interesting stuff to put, in, put on the form. Really. Absolutely. And that is, so the question was about having an area for open pollinated or heirloom. Uh, on the form and so we do have that on our donation form where we ask people to check a box if it's open pollinated or heirloom So we're hoping to make sure um, That we do get 
but it's fun to know the history. Oh, sure, yeah, and I think that relates to the earlier question about knowing the history, and whether it's local or... Yeah, and something else is uh, approximate maturity dates. Uh-huh. Yep, approximate maturity dates is a good thing, and right now we don't have that on the form. I'll probably have to go back and change it all around. Because here. <laughs> that really makes a, a difference where, where it's grown in the valley. Sure, sure. And there are a lot of microclimates here, uh, yeah. certainly, in this valley. Um, you know, and I think this is, you know, one thing, the open pollinated heirloom, and the <coughs> thing we decided not to put on the form was whether it was organic or genetically modified. And, of course, our hope is that we do get heirloom, open pollinated, organic seeds, but we also didn't want to discourage people who might have gone to the hardware store, bought non-organic seeds, used miracle Grow, or, you know, whatever, as fertilizer, because we want to encourage people to grow and to try that. And the concept that I kept going back to, I was like, well, even if you are growing non-organic seeds, using non, uh, non-organic fertilizers or inputs, and you're growing broccoli, that's still way better than going down to the gas station and getting a corn dog. <laughs> you know, so to try and keep it in perspective that we, certainly there are some people who are experienced enough and have the knowledge and know-how and are far enough down the path to garden and grow organically and use all these resources, but we don't want to exclude the people that it's entirely new to. So we are trying to keep it open that way, and that could be something that evolves and changes over time. Any other questions? Yeah. Will uh, will we be able to make drop offs at like the Kalispell Library or? That's a good question. And right now, I didn't you know, hear the question. <laughs> my answer is basically that we are just going to be accepting donations at the Columbia Falls Library, and I think it's something that we could work towards. But during the pilot period, certainly we're just going to have seeds go directly to our Columbia Falls location. Um, I do have visions of seeds getting strewn all across the, <laughs> you know, crushed by a pile of books and strewn all around. So um, we will currently only be accepting seed donations when we fall as a location. So do you have any, uh, do you have like a running list of how many different types of uh, seeds have been donated? Or is it like, no? Just nope. show up, look through the box? Yep. See what's there? Yep, we're trying to keep it really streamlined. We did meet with, um, Five Valleys Seed Library. Sorry, the question was about um, a running list of what seeds are available. Um, we went down to Five Valleys Seed Library, which is in the Missoula Public Library, and they do catalog their seeds there, which means you have to have a library card to check them out. Um, we decided not to go that route. Um, certainly, we would love to know what people are taking and what's popular and uh, how often they're taking things. But overall, again, it was that accessibility and that it takes a lot of time and energy to catalog everything. And then to make sure people have library cards to check it out, it adds a whole nother step. So for now, we are just keeping it simple. You can come in, see what's available, take something. And, and Robin goes through it then when it comes in. And so she kind of yeah. does a little quality control on whatever it is. And Exactly. So, okay. yep. So Robin will be doing the quality control. She will also manage what is out. So we're hoping that she will put out things that people are more likely to be successful with, you know, and the timing of planting things, you know, so that she's putting out, you know, tomatoes in February and March when people might be wanting to start them in their indoors and things like that, but probably not putting out tomato seeds in November. <laughs> but we'll see. We'll see how that goes, and it will be kind of a supply and demand thing, and just managing what goes. If everything goes, that's great, and if it doesn't, then we probably will have to kind of curate a little more of what we put out. Question? Any other questions? Thoughts? Well, I do have some seed here. You guys can help me pack if you're interested in. 
<laughs> in doing that. Um, otherwise, we can talk some. Okay, you can help out. Yeah, that's right. Cauliflower, early snowball, 2010. That's the information we have, so you could click Vegetable. Early snowball. And then down in the notes you can say 2010. 